Hello guys and welcome back. It's Chris here, the Ginger Fisherman, and I'm out doing some dead baiting today. Um, you'll have already seen by the thumbnail, so that won't be a surprise, um, one of the obscure baits I'm using today. Um, now, I've bought three different baits with me today. Why have I bought three different baits? I don't know. I just had uh, some sardines. I managed to pick some up from the local supermarket, way, way cheaper than any local tackle shop. Um, and then I also got some roach left over from my last time I went out dead baiting um, in the freezer. And then, I actually went out to do some underwater filming recently and I came across a dead pike. It's only a small dead pike, probably about six inches, something like that. And it had a bit of a mark, like gashes in his back, so I don't know if a, maybe a cormorant or something's dropped it, or a, I don't know, a big rat or something, I don't know. Either way, I used it in that video, just for a short amount of time, to see if I can get something to take it under the water, on the underwater camera. Uh, it was a bit of a struggle. So I whacked it in the freezer when I got home, and I brought it out with today's session. Now I've had to make up a rig specifically to be able to use that pike. I mean, I didn't have to do it like this, I just wanted to be able to get my bait back. But I'll show you that rig when I use the bait. Um, essentially all it is is a double treble rig, but then I've added a circle hook onto it, just to stick right into the tail of the bait to anchor it down, so you keep getting your bait back. I guess it's a method you could use with blueies and large mackerel as well, things that tend to fly off on the cast if you hammer them a bit hard, to get your baits back. Anyway, without further ado, I'm going to crack on with the session. I really hope I can get a take on that dead pike. I'm sure I will be able to. Like I say, imitate sort of like a bluey in the water. It just looks like a large mackerel. Big stripey sort of bait in the water. So I don't think it's going to be any better, let's say, than if I was using a mackerel or bluey. But um, it's just interesting, something different to use, isn't it, really? I mean, not many of us use pike as bait. It's not like we go out there catching pike to put on the oak. Otherwise, we'd never had any sport, would we? So let's crack on with the video. I hope you guys enjoy it. Uh, enjoy it. <laughs> hope you guys enjoy it. And uh, let's crack on, see if we can get any fish roaming the river. Instead of using a float like I was doing last time, I'm going to be freelining and using a ledger. So just something a little bit different than was last time. Water levels come down a bit. It's a lot clearer. I'm actually going to be able to see these fish take the bait. So I'm not too worried about watching an indicator because I'll be watching the bait get picked up on the bottom. Let's crack on, catch some fish. Line in the bait now. Roach on the circle look. Oh, <laughs> come on, pick it up. That was quick. Give it a sec. Ready? And reel. Oh no! Well, this official circle looks are rubbish. Let's give that park a free bait. For the bait that size, I'm surprised I didn't get hooked up. I think I. Uh, Struck a little bit, which is a big no no when it comes to circle up fishing. Damn it, I don't think I'll take another bait now. That's my fault, I should have reeled slower. Damn it, damn it, damn it, damn it. I feel like a decent fish as well. Half decent. Send the second bait down to it. He's eating one roach, maybe he's got the taste for another. Glasses are steaming up, it's getting warm. I can see it, it's gone down to the roach, is he going to take it? Let's give you a second meal of the day, buddy. If I were you, I'd take it. Oh, he's got it. <laughs> he's got it. Are you ready? Right, we'll get him this time. We'll get him this time. Yes, there we go, just real. I think I lifted the rod last time. Oh, my bag. There we go. On the roach, on the circle, look. 
see. First time, oh, I'll set the nail properly. First time I just didn't um, set the hook properly. I didn't just turn the reel left in my rod as well. And I pulled the bait, well, the hook straight out of the fish's mouth. That time, I just, just turned the reel and we hooked him. And, oh, and did him. Not a bad fish either. Let's take a look at where that hook is. It's right there, look, right in the scissor. If you can see that. It's right in the scissor there. There we go. Unhook nice and easily. Absolutely no damage to the fish. Let's take a look. Nice it's a bit chilly, so I've got myself some uh, gloves on today. They're pike safe. These are the uh, Ambassador Abu Garcia gloves. And there we go, a nice pike. Probably around the five pound mark, something like that. Lovely fish. Really nice gold speckles on its face. Hooked really nicely on the circle in the corner. Got him that second time. Let's get him back. Traces on. Let's get that bait out. There it is. Just about defrosted. Still a bit frozen, like. Right. Let's go. So put this hook buried right into the tail. They go buried right in the tail. They need these hooks. Getting nervous now because the pike I've seen is a really nice fish. These hooks can go up the bait. Here we go, it's rigged. You can see that a pike that I originally saw, I think it's the same fish. Swim right down the far bank. Come here. So heavy, it's quite difficult to cast actually. Swimming over to my bait now, I can see it. It's got it, it's got it. We picked up that pike. Oh my god. Oh, there's a duck on my line. Get off my line, get off my line. It's got it. Are you ready? There we go. Oh. We got him. We got him. What a take. What a take. See the bait right on the end of the pike's mouth. I should have set my up a bit better, shouldn't I? Oh, can't get him in the net. Can't get him in the net. Come on. Come on. Yes. 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 Huge pike. Oh, shame he's so skinny. God, that's a big fish. It's one fish that could have been an upper double if it weren't so skinny. I thought it was going to be huge. I thought it was going to be a 20. Oh, beautiful fish, though. Jack Pike just hanging off the side of his face. <laughs> oh, let him rest a minute and we'll get him unhooked. That was awesome. My uh, rigging worked really well. I kept my bait and both the hooks were in that pike's mouth, both the trebles. You can see there, look, there's the bait on that circle hook holding on. 
Now this pike, I could only see it in the water because it had already received some mouth damage from I'm guessing a previous capture. But I've got some spray we can put on that to help it heal up. It's got some gashes under its chin as well, maybe someone had it on a law. Really nicely hooked. There we go, it's one of the hooks out. Try not to break my fingers. The other hook's a bit further down its mouth, but it's not too far, it's just towards the back of its mouth. There we go, got them both out. Nice and smooth. And there we are, there's that bait. <laughs> that pike bait. Absolutely awesome. Our rig worked perfectly. I'll just put this to one side. I don't want to get either the pike or myself rehooked. So I'll move that. There we go. Let's take a look at him. He's got a right bulbous bottom of his mouth. I don't know where he's. I think it's just the shape of his mouth. I don't know. Really nice fish. I'll just check his mouth for any hooks. I can't see any hooks down there. And there we have it, a beautiful pike, probably a mid-double, probably around the 14 or 15 pound. Awesome, awesome fish. It's beautiful fish, we'll let her get fattened up, ready for winter time. Let's get her back, get a bit of spray on that wound, that old wound that she's got and we'll uh, get her back. Check inside. So. Give us some fresh breath. <laughs> oh, get your mouth stuck in the net, honey. Come on. There she goes. Start off without any shot on it whatsoever, and just freeline it straight down. See how fast it goes because it is a bit of a slack water here. Yeah, we'll drop it down in this edge. And we can adjust it accordingly, can't we? Sunk down quite nicely, no issues there. Cool, can't see any fish at the moment, but. I'm sure once they smell that stinky sardine, they'll soon come out of the woodworks, won't they? Put the rod down there, I'm going to keep an eye on the bait, like I said, I can watch it as in the clear water. It's the only time I really free line a bait. Oh, the pike's got it already, that was quick. Are you ready? Let's go. There we go. Oh, it's a nice fish as well. It's only got one hook in it, I think. <sighs> Losing back wine because the back wine's broken on the reel, come on. Only one hook's in it, yes! We got him. <sighs> I think I'll get a chance to set the big camera up for this swim. That was quick. Yeah, I uh, had only one hook in it because I struck nice and early. So we'll uh, give it a second down there, get the camera set up, we'll take a better look. I'm only going to need the small pies for this fish. Ooh. Because the hook is right there in the corner. Look at that, only one point in it. There we go, unhooked. Nice. This is an awesome fish, it's definitely bigger than it looked when it was in the water. 
but uh, when it grabbed the sardine, the sardine just disappeared, so there we go. Probably a fish into double figures, maybe about 11 pounds, something like that. 10, 11 pound. I can weigh it, so I can get a, an estimation on it, but uh, I can definitely get an exact weight on it, if I feel like it. So uh, I might get a quick weigh on this fish. Like I say, probably about 11 or 12 pound, maybe a bit less, maybe 10. But wicked fish and scrand that sardine. You just ate it in one bite, pretty much. Awesome, very clean, very healthy fish. So I'll get him resting in the water, then we'll get a weight on him and we'll get him back. Should have weighed that bigger one at the beginning of the video, really, shouldn't I? Never mind, let's get this one back. Oh no, I'm not. The net zero it is. It's not holding, but it's around 11, 14, 11, 15. So just under 12 pound. Because you get squirming. Let's get her back. We'll rest her down there. We'll give her a minute and we'll let her go. Wicked fish. So I hope you guys enjoyed this session. To summarise, like I said at the beginning of the video, I think um, no matter what that big pike, that sort of 14 pound, 15 pound that I had, I think it would have come to a large sardine if I had put that out there, or um, a bluey or mackerel. I don't think it would have really mattered. Um, it didn't really matter that it was a pike that it was eating, I think, but especially when the scavenger on the bottom for food, um, just a bigger meal is a lot more appetizing. It doesn't really matter what species it is, I don't think. Um, but obviously sea baits are a lot more oily, so generally if, you, if I was fishing darker water, I actually think that fishing um, a bluey or mackerel or just a sardine as opposed to a coarse bait would probably work a little bit better just from them really high scent levels. So thank you guys for watching, don't forget to subscribe to see more content. I've got an underwater video coming up probably in the next few weeks when I get around to finish filming it, which does actually include footage using this dead pike. I have got a little bit of footage of some fish investigating this and it's a little bit obscure to what you might think. It's not a pike. So, hope you guys enjoyed. Remember to subscribe, catch me later. I'll catch you guys later. Goodbye. Bye-bye. <laughs>